Alright guys, welcome back to another itch.io free-to-play walkthrough. Today we have the Crimson Terrors of Del Delamay Manor. And uh, it's another interactive horror game. We're getting close to Halloween, so well, we'll be through it. <laughs> I do like horror games, though, so it's good. I like uh, interesting stories. You are a freelance journalist, and you've taken on a writing job for your dream website. You've agreed to interview Thomas Delamay. A reclusive millionaire that lives in a mansion that the locals affectionately call Delamay Manor. You've heard tales of Delamay family and their manner of murder and darkness, folk tales and superstition, but still, you can't be, help be concerned. Soon you'll face the crimson terrors of Del Delamay Manor. Oh. You are alone at the gate of Delamay Manor. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced. Alone on this des deserted Michigan road. Complete with thick forest and no additional lights to hold back the pending dusk. It will be dark soon, but hopefully you'll be inside Delamay Manor, enjoying a warm cup of coffee. You turn to look at the, up at the enormous gate, its black iron unbent and completely free of rust. In the center of the gate is a glor gloriously swirled capital D. D for these nuts! <laughs> Oh, I'm such a five-year-old. Undoubtedly, a marquee of the Delamay name on either, on either side of the capital D are two fat cherubs, though their features are dark and indistinct. At least they're angels and not something else, you say. And with the history of the house and the rumors of what the Delamay Manor family have been up to over the last century, black magic and murder are enough to freak you out. Alas, it's time to head inside. After all, you've been sent to write a piece about Delamay Manor, and it's only getting darker. You walk to, up to the house intercom and hit the button. It dings, and you speak into it. Bing! Hello, I'm here to interview Thomas Delamay. The voice that comes out is smooth and quiet. Welcome. I'll be opening the gate to allow you access in a moment. But first, is there anyone else around? That's not a question. The road is deserted. No other cars have gone by since you've been outside, right? Look around just to double check. I don't want to lie to the dude. You glance around. It's an empty road to your right, an empty road to your left, an empty road all night. The forest is overgrown and heavily shadowed. The wind picks up and blows some leaves down, sending the, them scratching across the pavement. But out there amongst the blue, brown, and yellow, there is nothing. A red-shaped dart starts from behind a tree and vanishes. You blink a stare. What did you just see? You hold your breath to listen for a moment. Your heart beat thumps in your ears. Nothing moves. It must have been your imagination. Seeing things, seeing bumps in the oncoming night. You turn back and around and hit the button again. I see nothing out here, sir. Just me and my trusty notebook. You release the button and the response comes through nearly instantly. Beep. That's good, that's good. Welcome to Delamay Manor. Please, do not dally about coming inside. The gar garden can be a little dangerous. Please meet us in the dark library. The dark library? Spooky, well, kind of. The gate swings inward and you step forward to see Delamay Manor in it, all its glory. It's a gothic manor complete with soaring windows and window wide ga gables. What's a gable? All the window, I'm gonna look up what a gable is. I need to know. Inquiring minds want to know what a gable is. What is a gables? Is it a gobbles? The part of the wall that encloses at the end of a pitch roof. Interesting. Ah. Gablerific. All the windows are dark and likely closed up with heavy curtains. The house is painted the dark crims darkest crimson you've ever seen. To such an enormous, ma enormous manner painted such an odd color. You look ev over everything as you walk about the stone path. The gables are covered in red vergebird. Ver what is a vergebird? We're learning all kinds of things. What is a vergebird? Board. <laughs> Vergeboard. Barge board, probably from medieval Latin bargus or barcus or scaffold and not is a board fastened to the projecting gables of a roof. Oh, I am learning some architectural heavy stuff here. Oh, let's see. They are sharp enough to be impaled upon. 
from the ground. It's hard to see, but you can just make out one of those, out more of those cursed cherubs are everywhere. Not just on the verge of birds. They are carved into the top of the balcony columns, portrayed in reliefs below each of the wide windows. It's terrible and hideous, and you hate it. I hate it. He hates it! This house has life. Unholy, unnatural life. It should be burned to the ground. The ashes raised. You shudder to think of the flames climbing high, clawing at the stars. What is wrong with my dude? He does not like this house. As you reach the front steps, the boards groaning under your weight. You hear a whisper behind you. It's faint and sounds like words, but you're not sure. Is it coming from the garden bushes? Turn to look. Turn around, expecting to see nothing. Instead, you are greeted by a tall man in a red suit. No, red is wrong. It's crimson. The same crimson that so horribly paints Delamay Manor. He's slender. He is slender, and he is also wearing a top hat. From the brim of the hat to his shoes, he is entirely dressed in that same poor, terrible color. He grins and waves one long hand. Come now. Gas must explore the garden. Come, see my statues and my friendly, friendly flora. The crimson-suited man spins on his heel and struts away. His skinny arms pumping wildly, you watch him go until he vanishes behind a wall covered in flowers. It must be the garden. Your trip here has gone from odd to unreal, but now you're torn. The voice of the air, over the intercom says to come straight into the house and to avoid the garden, but this oddly dressed man wants you to follow him. What's the move here? Let's play it right the first time. Hey, ignore the weirdo. Ignore the weirdo. Let's knock on the door. We'll do it wrong the second time. We'll do all the wrong answers. When you go to knock on the door, the swing, it swings open with a sinister creak. You let your hand fall down to your sides. Looks like they really were expecting you. You step inside. The warmth of the manther falls over you. A staircase rises up triumphantly to your left. On your far right, in some kind of drawing room, a fire roars. Roar. From far off. You can hear the muffled sound of classical music. The house is breathtaking. Original wood, sconces. What is a sconce? What are these things? What are these words? Why are you using words? Sconces are for candles. Oh, it's the thing that they hang off the wall with. Interesting. Good. Flickering with fresh flame. Tapestries hanging, portraying medieval royalty in all their glory. It's everything you could have dreamed of. The hallway in front of you is long and narrow. It leads to a closed door. On it, you can barely make out the word Black Library. Bingo, you say. Though you want to explore the rest of the house, you don't want to be rude. Maybe after the interview, you can ask for a tour. The creepy red crimson suited butler can lead you around and be creepy some more. You walk down the hallways, your shoes echoing on the hard floors, hardwood floors. About midway down, something catches your eyes. Paintings. They are gorgeous, oil paintings, each laid out in the detailed frames. There are three in total, each masterfully done. You should probably examine these. You can describe them in your piece. You stop at the first one and read the plaque on the frame. The Delamay Manor is constructed, 1899. The painting shows the great wooden skeleton of its mansion being made. You spot construction workers hauling wood and tools to the frame. At the far left of the piece, standing beside a... All tree is a man in a crimson colored suit and top hat. Huh. It must be Alistair Delamay, the builder of this house and the family's original patriarch. But that's impossible. Alistair Delamay is dead, long dead. That figure in the painting looks exactly like the man in the garden. Exactly. Next painting. This one is labeled The Cost of Fail and Failure of Godhood. And it's far more abstract. In the center of the dark swirls of the painting stands the crimson suited man. You're a hundred percent you've a hundred percent decided. That man is Alistair Delmay, the original patriarchy. His eyes are cast down, hidden in shadow by his top hat. All around him are corpses. They float in the colored swirls, dismembered and chopped, sliced and drowned, women, children, and men. It appears the rumors of the murders are true. Until the final painting. The plaque reads the unnaturals look upon us. You notice Alistair Delmay at first. His arms are pointed towards the clouds, and his face is twisted in pain and sorrow. In the painting, four monstrosities hang in a storm cloud. They are peering down. The fir first is an enormous horse, its eyes glowing green. It's rearing up. Stars fall from its hooves. Excuse me. Planted below it is a moniker. Eloué, the galloper. 
Nay. Beside, it is an enormous serpent. I'm calling from the dark depths of space. The lines that form its twisted body are unclear. Its moniker, a Rayrion, the Slithered. The next is a bear, but everything about it is wrong. The eyes are too human, too real. And where its paws should be are two slender hands, long and wrinkled. It was as if someone had glued human hands onto the beast at the base of the bear's bulk. The artist painted these words, Berlian, the prime, and the final form. Someone has scratched it out. The only thing you can make out are the tips of what would appear to be tentacles. And below the scratches, Norinhal, the void one. You don't like that one. <laughs> Even seeing the words causes something to happen to your brain. Oh, he must have a headache as well. I have a headache. He has a headache. We are twinsies. A light pain that grows with every passing second. You force yourself to look away. A woman is standing behind you. You yelp and nearly fall over. Oh, shit! No, I'm just kidding. Sorry, you startled me. The woman says nothing. She dressed in a black and white mage uniform, the kind that hasn't been worn in 50 years. Her eyes are a light green, her hair curly beneath her hat. She, her hat. she slouched her knees bent. When she speaks, she can barely hear her. Please be careful in the library. You nod. I will. I'm here to interview Thomas Delamay. And I was just wondering if the maid starts, suddenly stands up straight and jerks her head towards the hallway. Oh, please don't be mad, Mr. Mrs. Delamay. I'm coming. She shouts. The maid looks at you again, and her features are twisted with fear. Mr. Delmay can be a good man. Not always, but he can be. Miss Delmay, on the other hand. The maid's hazard, maid hazards a look back down the hallway. When she looks again, her face is covered in blood. It runs from her eyes. It runs from her ears. When she opens her mouth, blood purrs. Okay, time to run over her chin. It splatters the front of her blouse. Her jaw twitches, and the blood splatters with a crunch. The side of her head compresses inward as if being squeezed. You stumble backward, a scream caught in your throat. You blink. Blink. And her face is back to normal. No more blood, nothing. Miss Delmay can be cruel. Miss Delmay will punish you if you do the wrong thing. And the punishment in the Delmay family can be eternal. With those words, the maid rushes away, leaving the acrid smell of copper in the air. You watch her go, and then you shudder. Hallucination. That's all it was. It was a hallucination, of course. You look at the door on your left. The dark library. It's time for this interview. This done. You open the door. The dark library. You take it all in. Walls painted black. Towering bookshelves jammed with ancient-looking volumes. A massive table adorned with a candelabra lit with four orange candles dominates the center of the room. You walk in stunned. It looks like a library. Is this the dark library that the voice over the intercom spoke of? You have arrived in the dark library. A man's voice, so familiar, breaks the two mic silence. Look afraid of who you might see, but it's just an old man. He's sitting at a far table, his eyes glowing. He's dressed in a silk robe, his gray hair combed, and a gentle smile on his face. He looks normal, kind. You are here to learn about this house, are you not? I'm sick of this old man, this house. <laughs> are you Thomas Del May? Old man just laughs. <laughs> I'm not what you think. This house isn't what you think. The Delmay family played with forces beyond their control. They tried for a century to contract the mortal unnaturals, four points of a dead star, powers of unfathomable power, keenons consuming the baubles of man. But the Delmay family only tasted ash. Everything they tried failed. Alistair Delmay spilled blood by the gallons. His ancestor followed his lead. Foul lead, and it was all for bane. They slain their own to follow the world. And they died, as all mortals do. Something is happening. Before your very eyes, the old man is gro growing. His skin is pulling taut. His eyes are darkening even as he speaks. But that's not all. The room is also changing. The shadows are growing. From the door where you just came from, the two... Two green eyes glow. Hooves tear at the wooden floor. But Thomas Delamay succeeded. He found the proper pathway. You see, the Delmays could never summon the unnaturals. They only murdered others. They used their wealth to hurt the world. Selfish fools. But Thomas knew better. 
our bookcase fell with a momentous slam. Books flew and a snake uncoiled over the mess. Its fat red head rising, rising. A bear used its human-like hands to pull aside the velvet cordons behind the old man. It blew great foul breaths. The chamber reeked of sulfur, blood, and death. The black walls of the library roiled and shifted as it, as reality came undone. The old man, before you lifts his head, hand, and his fingernails fall off and land on the table. That's gross. A chunk of his cheek falls wetly after it. Ooh. He yeah, may have once been Thomas Delamay, but no longer. Thomas knew that evil comes from within, so he served as the door, as the vessel. With that final word, word the old man's skull exploded. Great tentacles lashed at the ceiling. Eyes blink and spin. Galaxies contained within, as the great monstrosity ripped itself from a vessel known named Thomas Delamay. You realize what has happened. The unnaturals have come. They close in, and unholy forms tearing at the reality of the house. Your mind is coming undone. Fear has paralyzed you with two Zs. You've seen through the veil into the dark and neos of beyond. But you, you can see it in the impossible gaze of the void one. You speak to the unnaturals. Igluy, the... Galloper, Oravion, the Slithered, Borleion, the Prime, and Norenthal, the Void One. Norenthal! Your voice is so very quiet. Why are you doing this? The unnaturals twist and stare. Can they see you? Why have they come? Does it matter? The voice that once belonged to Thomas Delmay slices through your brain like a knife. I, that's quite simple. Been in this house long enough. And you have a story to write. The end. Thank you for visiting Delmay Manor. To see everything that it has to offer, make sure you visit the garden and the inside of the manor. There is a lot to see in this mysterious house. Comment and give my piece five stars if you enjoyed it. And if you love my fiction, you can see all my published pieces at, and more on my website. Logan Oblee, Logan Noble Author dot com. <laughs> Let's say no good Logan Noble Lee. <laughs> yeah, I hope you had a happy, had slash have a happy Halloween. Logan Noble. Let's check the other endings. Tired of this old man. The old man just laughs. Oh, I've already seen this. That doesn't matter. It's time for the interview. You blink. Sorry. Force yourself to look away. You, you. Nope. Okay. Well, oh, I'm into the garden. Maybe this is where you're to interview Thomas Del May. It seems plausible that Mr. Del May would want you to interview you in the garden. Maybe this red freak is the butler. You head back down the steps and veer off into the garden. On each side of the tall head hedge walls, laced with. Excuse me. Placed through with flowers. You're no flower expert, but you spot many kinds of roses and other flowers intermingled among the thick foliage. After a moment of walking, the hedge wall, eh, the hedge walls fall away, and you can and you find yourself in some kind of courtyard. On each side of you are a series of statues. I can't read. You read read about them before. They were sculpted by the first Del Delmay. Alistair Delmay, did the change name? Did the name change? In <laughs> the late 1800s, the stories say that he was mad, that people died in the house, nothing was ever proven. But it was just the start in this house's terrible history. Stop to look at the statues. Describing those statues will make good fluff for your article. You step up to, one, to the first one. It's an enormous horse. The eyes glowing green, it's rearing up, and the bottom of its exposed hooves a worn with age and exposure to the air. A plaque at the foot of the statue reads, Illaway, the Galloper. The statue beside it is an enormous serpent. Its body is coiled up and it piled so that it stands tall. You can see its fat head, tongue out, staring at the very spot you're, which you are standing in. Wavering lines run its length. The bronze plaque at the bottom of the statue reads, Oradion, the, the Slithered. The third statue is a tyrannical bear. Standing tall on its hind legs, and its paws are long and slender, it's unnatural, and you briefly wonder if a mistake was made when this was carved. 
The bear's jaw is closed, but you shudder to imagine how long his teeth would be. Long, sharp, dripping blood, dripping blood. This plaque reads, Berlayan, the prime. The final statue, you rub your, at your eyes. When you look at it, your vision swims. A terrible pain stabs through your head. Look at it. You blink away and try again. Your head feels like it's ready to split. You catch certain fe features, tentacles, fangs, and eye. But the pain causes you to cry out and look down. You can't do it. Something about this statue is wrong. Wrong in a way that you've never experienced. Maybe you have a tumor. Maybe you have... Look at it! You scream and your gaze is jerked up and now you must see it. It's taller than the rest of the statue and it's only growing. The shadow crawls over you, causing sweat to rise across your body. Your body shudders and you resist the urge to lie, lay down. You resist the urge to just die at the foot of the statue. This one has no plaque, but it doesn't need one. You already know its name. You know its true name. Nor doll the void one. Please do not linger. You startle and realize that you've been under a trance. What happened? Who? You slow, turn slowly and spot the crimson suited man. He's waiting for you. He's still smiling, but you can't see his eyes in the shadow of the top of his hat. Don't worry about that statue. He's gone away now. Just hope you don't see him again soon. Another vile smile. You look back over your shoulder. There's nothing there. No statue. You look around the garden, filling days. The other statues are still there. What are they? Fantasy creatures? Gods? Demons? Does it matter? The crimson suited man is walking further down the path. You press your lips together and follow him. The path opens up again into the another courtyard. This time, it's utterly dominated by one thing, an enormous to stone tomb. It's free of all markings, save for one word carved above the stone door. Delamay. The crimson suited man steps up beside the tomb. Right this way. Don't go peeking at my darlings. I've locked them away for safekeeping. Don't want you joining them. The crimson suited man winks. Now the dark library awaits. You know you should leave. You should run from the grounds. Flee for the city and your home. The story is not worth this, but your feet are moving. The shadow of the tomb is there, and you are descending. Candles light the way. Cobwebs hang from the pools of shadow. Dumb steps carry you down further and further. You think back to the statues in the garden, the fourth statue growing large in the recesses of your brain. As you walk, candles light the bones of Dalmay's past. Skulls, some small, some large, some grinning. All grinning. But you continue to walk until you see a light ahead, faint but growing brighter. Go to it. You open the door, the dark library. You take it all in, walls painted black, towering bookshelves jammed with ancient-looking volumes, a massive table adorned with a candelabra. Lit with four orange candles, dominates the center of the room. You walk in stunned. It looks like a library. This dark library that looks like the same. Let's see if this is the same. Okay, so that ends the same. It's just a different way. Like you see different things. Let me see if the other things can be different options. Hey, let me in. It's freezing out here. Okay, so the other options don't really matter, it doesn't seem. Wait, is this different? Alright guys, I think that's the full game, but... If you like videos like these, please like and subscribe. This game was pretty good. I like uh, reading about Cthulhu-esque monsters. Um, kind of didn't... I don't know. There wasn't much to it, really, but it was interesting. It was actually really interesting. I was like pretty um, wondering what was going to happen at the end, but it's really abrupt, it seems. like it just uh, I didn't expect it to come to an end so quickly. But yeah.